Welcome to the film cast review of Sisu. I'm going to read the plot summary of this movie from IMDb. When an ex-soldier who discovers gold in the Lapland wilderness tries to take the loot into the city, Nazi soldiers, led by a brutal SS officer, battle him. This movie is written and directed by Jalmari Helander. And it came out in theaters this week. Very crowded box office this week. A lot of good, mm-hmm. cool movies out in theaters. Uh, it did score in the top 10, but not much higher than that. Uh, that said, it had some of the most interesting trailers uh, for a movie this year, I would argue. And also, as of this moment, as we're recording this right now, currently has a 94% in Rotten Tomatoes. We've seen a lot of anti-Nazi art in our lifetime. And uh, probably the the person whose work this most closely resembles and is paying homage to is Quentin Tarantino who's with Inglorious Bastards. So my question for you, Devinder Hardwar, is do you think this movie, Sisu, has anything to add to this genre of movie? Uh, sure. It, uh, it kills Nazis real good. I think that is, <laughs> that's all I need. Yeah. That's okay, all fair. I need. I feel like some people need to be reminded that they're the bad guys. <laughs> we fought a whole war about this. Lots of people died because of this and, uh, they should always be framed as such. And I think this movie, this movie is a ton of fun, uh, even though it's about like, yeah, sheer brutality. Um, this movie is really being marketed as sort of like John Wick in like world war ii era right with a tough uh, grizzled soldier going up against nazis but it also reminds me a lot of mad max like there is a lot going on mm. here just like a guy who has been wronged a very simple premise um reminds me of the good the bad and the ugly too like there's a nice western setup in the way it is uh, cut up into different chapters it's a very like quiet and deliberate movie until it explodes with violence uh, also starring a lead character who pretty much says nothing until at a certain point, very much like John Wick four. Um, I think this movie is just like simple, simple base fun. I actually got to see this with my folks this weekend because like uh, easy pitch, easy pitch for a movie Take for my dad. Take the whole family. Take the whole Take the family. Whole family. To That's it's a family friendly adventure. <clears throat> but I grew up you know? watching, you know, really, really fun action movies with my dad and with my mom and mostly, you know, for my dad. Cause uh, she's always there. Um, but I, I saw Mad Max way too young. That was like one of the formative movies for me. And this is very much in that vein, just like really, really nice, simple setup. A guy finds gold. The Nazis want to take it. And he's a tough guy who can kick some butt. And that's really all I need. And this movie is filled with inventive kills, great set pieces, a lot of like character work through action too, which I also really enjoy, especially when you have a protagonist that doesn't talk basically grunts and like uh you tell you learn about him because of the things he does and how he interacts with things but also you see this in the villains of this movie too like i think there's an introduction to like the the big bad ss officer and we see just like a tr- a, a caravan of uh of people you know of nazi soldiers like going down the road and you introduce this guy just sitting basically above the 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 big cannon of a tank like in between his legs and just like just chilling just chilling. i think that actor uh, i didn't look up his name specifically but i think he does a really good job as the big bad ss villain um i think everybody is like they're all very distinctive even though it's filled with you know there there's this is not a movie where there's a lot of diversity but everybody has like very specific looks and you could tell who they are uh, especially on the villain side I, I just like so much of it. Like th- this feels like silent filmmaking at times too. Um, even though like there's a really fun score and really great sound effects and everything. This is just like nice, clean action told really well. And as like a post uh, John Wick type of thing, I'm still very much into it. We've seen so many of these things too. Like um, we reviewed nobody. There's, there are a lot of these movies where it's like, I listen, I like you. I know you probably did a couple months of training to to look <laughs> believable in this movie. Okay, fine. Sure, sure. I will buy you that Saul Goodman can can kick butt on a bus, right? Whereas this movie is like, oh no, this guy, I don't I don't know the extent of training, but like he delivers, he he uh, like I believe that he can mow down an entire army of Nazis and I just think it's uh it's it's praiseworthy. So yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. I'm glad it's getting good reviews and this is one of those things that's going to like really kick ass on uh, on home video. Like people are going to see this and want to rewatch it over and over. Jeff Kanata, what do you think about Sisu? Well, Dave, I guess you could say what I think about Sisu is best summed up in the form of a limerick. This film is in hardcore mode. It's fun 
but its fun seems a bit borrowed. From John Wick and We Know, there's some Tarantino and a big dose of Fury Road. Wow, Devendra really stole the thunder out of that one, huh? It All happens right. a lot, Dave. It happens <laughs> a lot. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You, I sit here and I go, I spent hours. And, and he, just, he just tweeted it out. He just tweeted it out. He just tweeted it out. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no basically what Devendra said I you know I I also had a good time with this movie I think it's preposterous on a number of levels right yeah. it's it, there are sequels I I'm excited to call out in the spoiler section some really inventive mm -hmm. moments that yeah. I've never seen before yeah. this that, is Wolfenstein level logic you know which is fine <laughs> sure right yeah. there are a number of moments where uh where you know I'm like oh that was a cool idea there are a couple of other moments where I go that's just not <laughs> you, you you went a step too far on yeah, the credulity yeah, meter yeah. um but it's a cartoon right this is yeah. a this is a action cartoon it is over the top uh, on every uh, on every conceivable level and you know our our hero's superpower is that he will endure more punishment than you will and in that sense you know it's fun like the, it, it delivers exactly what it sets out to deliver which is that kind of rollicking, uh, visceral good time of, you know, slicing and dicing some Nazis, an old dude who everybody underestimates just wants to get it, just wants to get his little thing, just wants to do it, and everybody's standing dog. in his way. Yeah, you know, I I had a good time with this movie. I don't think it is you know Inglorious Bastards level. It certainly feels like a mix between Inglorious Bastards and John Wick and Fury Road to me. Uh, Fury Road in that we've got you know a caravan that we need to take down that has some ladies in it. <laughs> and uh, we've got, you know, it, it very much uh, Inglourious Bastards, very much John Wick, this uh, silent protagonist. Um, and if you like those movies, I think you're gonna have a good time with this movie. Uh, I think it's well, well worth seeking out. It doesn't overstay its welcome. And there are enough really cool sequences that I thought, oh, that was, I've never seen that before. I've never even seen that idea before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's cool. And there's a few more sequences where I was like, I don't buy it, but I'm still having a good good enough time that I'm not going to really hold it against this sure. movie. Well, one thing I want to make clear, uh, Tarantino does not own the genre of Nazi exploitation movies. That existed long before Glorious Bastards. I think this actually feels more like the old stuff, like the stuff um, I saw some stuff in VHS from like the 60s and 70s. So it's like it is that sort of thing. But Tarantino certainly like reminded us of what's possible with it. Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's Jeff, true. Was, he, he... was there a butt coming or was that was that it? I didn't know if you're going to say but. Da, 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 no, no, no. I yeah, think yeah. I, 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 I wholeheartedly recommend this for folks that are looking for exactly this kind of experience, because I think it, as Devendra said, it, de it delivers on its promise. And if it's, it's promise is, Hey, do you want to watch uh, some really cool action sequences with a, you know, a, an unlikely protagonist doing uh, over the top crazy stuff? I think it's fun. Um, but, you know, it's it's not going to be in my end of the year list or anything like that. Let me try to put together a theorem right now that is probably not true at all, but I'm sure. going to give it a shot anyway, okay? You guys, I, by how strongly you negatively react to this, I'll, I can decide how true this is. But um, the length of a chapter in a movie or a book is often directly proportional to how much gravitas and seriousness that book should be treated with. What I mean by that is, uh, or it's inversely proportional to like how pulpy and disposable it is, you know? Okay. Like the longer the chapter, the more substantial it feels. I you're remember not talking like about chapter within the movie, or you're talking about like a single movie. Yeah, chapters within a movie chapter or movie. um or chapters within a book, right? You're uh -huh. saying more uh, words equals more seriousness. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. That's yeah. absolutely what I'm saying. Um because I remember, you know, hearing about when the Da Vinci Code came out. It was like, oh, one of the great things about that book is like the chapters are so short. You can like read, you can read like three no. to four pages and complete a chapter. And That's feel like a, a the Dan Brown done. method. Yeah. It is effective, but it's very much like he, he, yeah, he relies on that game. I, yeah. I think that's ridiculous <laughs> yes that's, that's completely fair uh, you know was the great um, gatsby's like 200 pages total yeah you know? yeah uh, you're you're right it's it's a terrible it's a terrible <laughs> theorem and uh i remember let's reading call, the let's, call Code. Blef's, let's call it bluff's theorem i don't want to be associated <laughs> with it um but uh yeah i think uh it, it i did think about that idea because the chapters in this movie are really short like we just usually a movie has like three chapters or four or five chapters tops and it's like chapter one 
the the heist and it's like goes for like 40 minutes chapter two the aftermath you know whatever this is like chapter one the gold and then literally 10 minutes later it's another chapter and i'm like wait i was just settling into that chapter is it in- I- Oh, okay. <laughs> it yeah. seems like a weird knit to pick, but yes, I, I'll, yes. I'll grant you. It's not, even, like- it's not even a knit. It's just more like, I think the fact that there, like, is there something to the fact that there's so many chapters in this movie that, and also, it's also a cartoon, as Jeff Kanata put it, you know, like, I, um, okay. M- maybe not. Okay. I've spent too much time on this. I, I will say <laughs> I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed the movie. I think it like delivers on what it promises. You watch the trailer. You, you're like, this is that kind of movie, and then the, you watch the movie, and it completely mm-hmm. delivers on what you are hoping for and expecting. Yeah, good action. That's all I want. Sol- Sol- solid good action, action, solid ideas. We'll talk about them in spoilers. Um, the thing that I didn't like about the movie, or I, I, in, in some ways wished it had been a different movie, in some ways, uh, is... I wondered what a more serious version of this movie would have looked like. Because the opening... 10 to 15 minutes of the movie feels a lot like there will be blood. Paul Thomas yes. Anderson's there will be blood. Like it's very like it's this one guy in the middle of nowhere trying to find stuff underground that's valuable. It feels very gritty. There's this beautiful shot of this guy. He like stands up and you see all these like planes fly overhead and people like migrate, mm-hmm. like the forces migrate. It's just like there's some incredible stuff here. And yeah. I thought the movie was going to be that. Like I thought it was gonna be. Here's did like you a not very... see the trailers before this? I for, where where did you? I, come I in? did, but you okay. could still, you know, you could still. The movie could still be that, you know, in some ways, right? Like, yeah. Uh, I, I and... would say go back and watch some classic westerns, guys. Like it, it is full of the same thing, like slow drawn out the opening of the Good, Bad, and the Ugly. It's like slow drawn out scenes, and then it builds up to like well, crazy ass action. Yeah, the Good, no, Bad, and the Ugly never gets as goofy as this. Yeah, movie that's the thing. That's this movie gets different. really, yeah. really goofy. That's yes. the thing. Yeah, and it's like, oh, like I wonder how, like. It, it, everything about it feels like it's calibrated to make you feel like it's an exploitation movie. Yeah, and that's fine, you know. But it's kind of like, he, okay, I I feel no confidence at all about my th- point about short chapters. Okay. That was a silly point. I retract that. Here's a point I feel more strongly about. It's like the difference between Quinn Tarantino's Planet Terror versus De- like, or sorry, uh, Death Proof versus Robert Rodriguez's Planet Terror. You know, like one of those movies felt like it was actually from that time period. And the other one feels like it was made by someone who watched trailers for movies of that time period. You know, <laughs> like Planet, Planet Terror being like the latter. Like it's like, oh, this is fun, goofy and campy. But like Death Proof actually felt like, oh, like a bunch of people got together and made this for like almost no money and put actual right, right. lives in danger. You know, like and I I enjoy that kind of thing more or like at this point in my life I enjoy the kind of death proof more maybe at a different point in my life it would have been Planet Terror but everything about this movie makes it feel like it, it knows it's an exploitation movie including the score it's like down down you know it's like very guitar heavy and I'm just like I just kind of I, at times I'm like I think I would enjoy this more if there was no score here like I would enjoy this more if it was uh-huh. just not as self-conscious about what it is. That's me personally. Um, but overall, I still had a good time with the movie. I just kind of was like, the first 10 minutes set up this movie that was very intriguing to me. And then the rest of the movie is still very fun, but it's something else. And it's not That's, kind of what I was hoping for and expecting for the first know. 10 minutes. Again, so, yeah. like a lot of exploitation movies do start out this way. Like you have to have the buildup to get the catharsis of the violence and everything that comes after it. So, I, I see what you're saying, Dave. Like you, you probably thought you were getting into something else, but I, I think they're one and the same. Like, I, I don't think this is very much more of the death proof style thing because yeah, it gets a little, you know, kind of zany. I think, I do think Planet Terror becomes more of a cartoon. And it's like a little more. That's what I'm saying. It, this yeah. is, this is the planet. This is like Planet Terror as opposed to death proof, which yeah. is like, in my opinion, way more grounded um, than what Planet okay. Terror was trying to well, do. But, yeah. sure. So would you put, I mean, would you put, Glorious ba- bastards in the category of what you were hoping this was. I think movie just Glorious really Bastards, thing, you know, Glorious Bastards yeah. is its own. Th- it's like it's like a sprawling epic. Like I don't even yeah. like this. Mm-hmm. This movie takes place in a similar time period and has ki- Nazis being killed and has kind of the same font and score style of what he was doing there. But other than like aesthetically, like it feels very different as a movie to me. You know, sure. Um, so anyway. Uh, but yeah, still a fan, still agree with a lot of what you guys said. Um, mm-hmm. we should probably start talking about some of the stuff that we liked about this sure. movie in specific. Yeah. So let's get to spoilers for Sisu starting right now. <laughs> 
So, Jeff, what are some of the specific things you thought were particularly ingenious about My Sisu? favorite sequence in the whole movie is the water sequence mm -hmm. where he gets the mm. Nazis to come in. He, he's able to stay underwater because he slices open their throat and breathes the yes. air that's in their lungs. <laughs> yes. Incredible. Yeah. That was, Incredible. That's some Rambo, Rambo shit. Right there. Uh, that yeah. is yeah. some baller ass Rambo shit. Um, I, I mean, and it's it's ridiculous, but it's the 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 notion is so audacious that you go, yes, movie, do it. Mm -hmm. And I I love I love the the pacing of that sequence where he's just out, he just jumps in the water. First of all, sets himself on fire for no reason to scare the dog away, I guess. But <laughs> a terrible way to handle that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, and then leaps in the water and, and I love how everything just kind of stops and they're like, well, this dude's going to have to come up eventually mm -hmm. get in the boat, go get him. And then the he movie just... does take its time. Like when it has to, like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a lot of I mean, immediately after that is one of the most preposterous moments where I was like, they 50 caliber <laughs> gun on, that's mounted on the, on the top of this tank is going to be stopped by a piece of tin that you're holding. Or, no, no, it was a body. It was a body, was a body. that he had. Was a body. The yeah. body is going to protect him from the 50 cal, which is <laughs> insane that he would, you would even suggest <laughs> that movie. And then that other moment where he like he gets them to shoot at him and he's holding that shield. But it's like, yeah, he's, he's not the shielding pan. his whole body. Well, the, shoot the, him the, in the ankles. Some bullets That's from fascinating. his like, legs. Yeah. That's fascinating because the thing that quote unquote bothered me the most was when he is hung or hanged, I should say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I was thinking to myself, wow, I'm really curious how they're going to get out of <laughs> this one. This situation, how is he yeah. going to get out of this one? And it turns out he wasn't dead and he's just holding his breath. And then he eventually is able to prop himself up. That's pretty baller. Using though. his like the, the, the actual way. No, I, I, it's, I it's, think uh, they yeah. are classic movie villains where mm -hmm. they just leave. Mm -hmm. And he's, they know he's not dead yet. Dead. What's, what's going to happen? Is he going to shimmy strangle, over? You know, he's, yeah. he's slowly the life will leave him. Like any good Bond villain, well, I'll yeah. leave the room now. Bye, Mr. Bond. I like that sequence, by the way, where the one soldier takes off his hat and then they're like, yeah, that was <laughs> okay, funny. well, yeah, the, we'll all take off our hat. Let's pay our respects. He's a yeah, human being funny. after all. That was nice. Put your hat but on. I like yeah. the note, like it's so effed up that the, uh, the fact that he just finds a way to take the weight off his neck yeah. Yeah. by using the wound in his leg and... to support himself. Yeah. And his yeah. end game is, I'm just going to wait and something's bound to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's coming up CC. Like a plane, a plane, you know, flies by and like shakes the beam that yeah. he's on, you know, like it's, it's, it's preposterous. Yeah. That, whole, that yeah. whole moment is, is, you know, you just got to go, okay, but there's nothing badass about what he does other than he's like, I will use the wound in my leg. Yeah. He to healed himself for a while. Up. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, the, I mean, the other coolest moment in the movie to me was um, he just lets that dude smack him in the face with the with, with the uh, the clip, the mm -hmm. uh, what's it, carabiner, and mm -hmm. then snacks snaps it to the bomb, and the guy's like, "Wow!" I thought that was pretty killer, uh, mm -hmm. pretty mm -hmm. cool. But 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 again, followed up by another preposterous sequence where he's just like <laughs> mining the bottom of the plane. You know, like there's no <laughs> universe where you're going to be hitting that enough times to get pop through the plane mm -hmm. anyway mm -hmm. well, they, didn't, they didn't make planes the same way back then jeff you know yeah. so you're, you know you're so right you know. yeah i i actually again in in the early parts of the movie i still thought hey this might be like a fairly grounded story <laughs> um <laughs> you, you know grounded in the same way that i would say like john wick is grounded. like i think this movie is more cartoony than john wick personally like i oh, think it is far more cartoony mm -hmm. thank yes you, thank you yeah uh, no it's, and, it, yeah this movie is is completely detached from physics. Right. I mean, the early scenes when the the Nazis first confront him, he like he takes down those five guys, and then he uses like a mine to to disorient them. He was that was like to very dig cool. it out, dig it out yeah. carefully, and throw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's still all like awesome stuff. I like, like I, still, I mean, yeah. before that, even the when he's just like, I'll ride by these guys, not knowing I'm riding into a minefield, and then the mm -hmm. horse blows up. I was like, that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Never yeah. seen that before. So at that point, I'm still like, oh, this is like relatively grounded. And then, you know, once the I, water starts stuff, mm -hmm. starts, uh, water material starts, and then like the hanging, I was just like, okay, like I can't, you know, this is just beyond. Any yeah, there's level. no, there's no yeah. real rules that are related to exactly. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. still fun. 
I mean, I think I think the movie sets its tone pretty clearly when he throws, uh, was it the guy's hat or something uh, that splits the guy right down the middle? The first major action, yeah, yeah. Action, action sequence where it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I see what you're doing. This is a movie where heads get, you know, uh, broken open, bodies get exploded on mines, and that is your tone. And I think it kind of rolls with it. I all the slower elements throughout, like him walking through the caravan and just like not. Not even like reacting, not even giving a shit. Everyone's just looking at the guy. It's like, is he? Yeah. Is he not going to say hello? Does he not see we are the Nazis? Be afraid, man! And they're all like <laughs> looking at him like incredulously. And um, I think all these things like really, really add up. And you meet all these characters for the first time, and it's all really well done. Like you see, oh, that that guy, the subordinate guy, is kind of like the the one who's kind of the the biggest asshole of the bunch and you see the leader there and he's just like he's the one who calls him off and tells him not to kill him he's gonna die anyway there's a sort of like weird nobility about him that's just kind of fascinating too so yeah yeah i want to give a shout out to i think mimosa willamo is the main woman that Mm -hmm. kind of takes charge towards the end of the movie and uh i think they you know they do a good job as she does a good job as well of uh, killing Nazis, and I do agree with you, Devendra. It is sad that we need media to reinforce the idea that Nazis are bad. Like I yeah. remember when I was a kid watching Indiana Jones, being like, "Oh yes, Nazis were bad," and everyone knows that. And I'm so mm-hmm. glad that Indiana Jones is reinforcing that fact. And um, there's a lot of people today who don't feel that way, and that really sucks, you know. And so every now and then, we need a new movie to say, "Hey." Um, this is how we really feel about Nazis. They're one of the few people other than zombies and vampires that we can revel in their being, uh, you know, completely dismantled. Uh, and uh, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it, you know? Um, any other memorable sequences or thoughts on this movie uh, before we wrap up here, folks? Did you guys see any of this director's other movies? He did uh, He did Rare Exports, which was that, mm. like, Santa Claus type yeah. of thing, like horror thing. And he did that, ga- that movie with uh, the Samuel L. Jackson one plus a kid in the woods movie like a couple of years ago. I, I like this guy. I like how he does action. He makes really fun, yeah. you know, tight action movies. And I can't wait to see more from him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think I saw um, rare exports. I think we, yeah. we talked about that on the show. Um, and it's another one where it's like super violent, super over the top, but fun. Like it doesn't take itself too seriously at yeah. all. It's, it's there to be a goofy fun time. I gotta say, I was really impressed with how good this movie looked in general. It looks like they mm-hmm. actually filmed on location yep. yeah. for a lot of stuff. The underwater stuff they did, it looks like they actually used a water tank. Like they weren't just, they didn't just fake it. It looks like they actually did a lot of it in reality. Um, and even some of the CG looks pretty solid overall. I, I, it's very stylized, but I think it really works for the movie. Um, I was just impressed. You know, it's hard to like haul all these people, film crew out there to the middle of nowhere to film this stuff, but. Um, mm-hmm. Nature is really provides really amazing production design, and it does look like they filmed out there on location for a lot of the movie. Yeah, and the um, director clearly like has an eye too. Like I think most shots are framed really well and really interestingly. Yeah. The moment when he walks up, he's heading to a town, the closest town with the bank, I guess, and it's just on fire right in the background. It's like yeah. okay, that's all. That's all like you know an effect, but it also looks like a gorgeous painting at the same time too and he kind of balances all that and when he enters into the towards the end when he enters the like bombed out town too like it's just really well portrayed and his whole thing with the bank teller at the end it's fun funny i dig it yeah it was weird to me that like that was the ending of the movie you know like is him getting to the bank in time. Was his goal? Yeah. that's all he wanted yeah he yeah was, yeah, as, as opposed to just like him like escaping with the gold, and you can infer that it's like they got to show him being in the bank. I guess this is a movie that's very pro existing financial system, guys. I mean, don't <laughs> pro don't, capitalism. I like that's don't, your takeaway. Don't your takeaway show this movie. Pro-bank. Don't show this movie to the blockchain people. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> they are they're going to have real problems with it. This okay? movie says invest in gold, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. yes. Indeed. <laughs> well, that, that's uh, a whole other set of weirdos. So, yeah, don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but overall, Sisu, fun Nazi killing time. Oh, great video. The other thing oh, I wanted Jeff. to bring up yep. about this movie is that I love its stance on the dog, which is he does not give a shit about the dog. <laughs> <laughs> he tells the dog to leave at one point. But other than that, he's like... Totally fine leaving the dog behind. Yeah, he like, leaves the dog I, behind several times. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that he's just, you know, in every other movie, like the guy's going to be the, you know, we got to protect the dog above all else. And he's just like, uh, I got shit to do. I can't think about this dog. <laughs> Take care yeah. of yourself, dog. Yeah. 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 We'll see you at funny. the end. Yeah. Um, 
you you know another thing I also appreciated about this movie is that they um they gave like a pretty cool explanation of why uh, the Germans would also be interested in the gold, not just yep. for like selfish reasons, but then yeah. like it's like Nazis who know that they're losing the war. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, cool. that's actually not a wide, you know, uh, a perspective we see that often, right? Yeah. We see people like in Valkyrie, like they go up against the movie Valkyrie, the Tom Cruise movie, they go up against Hitler. They're trying to stop Hitler, but like, it's not as often as you see like, Hey, we know we're on the losing side. Let's try to like eke out as much stuff as we can out of this. Um, and I so I, I like that that was like a fairly like character driven, uh, plausible way for the, that plot line to play out. Uh, um, so yeah, so there's a lot of like nice things about the movie. I, I think there's some uh, solid, some cool stuff. yeah, solid. pretty solid, pretty solid, pretty good time. So, um, well, anyway, at the end of the day, it's really impressive that Jalmari Halander made a movie. Thank you so much for watching this video of the Filmcast. Check out these other videos that we have available and be sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get other videos from us in the future. You can also go to thefilmcast.com to catch all of our audio podcast versions of all of our episodes. And support this podcast at patreon.com slash film podcast, where you can sign up for ad-free episodes and exclusive After Darks. Thanks so much to everyone who makes the Filmcast possible. 